Being able to damage enemies and random miscellaneous objects in a scene is necessary for most VR games. For example, say you were in some kind of shooter and you wanted to shoot an enemy so that way you could actually kill that enemy. Well, it wouldn't make sense if you shot them and nothing happened, but they were maybe able to shoot back at you without anything happening too. So in this tutorial, I want to show you a very simple way we're able to damage enemies as well as miscellaneous other actors that really don't need any health in a VR level. But before we jump into that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so for our health, I put together just a really simple setup to help represent how our health is going to work. So this is perhaps the most basic way that you can add in health for your, uh, for your player um, or really any actor. As far as I'm aware, this works for any actor or any class that's derived from an actor. So what we have here is this little sphere here is a damage actor, at least that's what we're gonna be calling it in this tutorial. Um, and this cube is our health actor. So we can go and grab this little sphere and we can move it around and just kind of grab it. And um, yeah, just as you normally would, I suppose. Um, and then whenever it overlaps with our cube, it'll actually take away one health. Now this can honestly go in a number of different directions as well. So if I go and hit it once, it's just gone down from three to two. And then again, that's two to one. And then one more time and it's now destroyed and it's all out of health um, it's really simple really easy to use um, why is this not working there we go <laughs> the grab seems to be acting up a little bit on my VR pawn here um, not really sure why but anyways that kind of gives you a very general idea um, I'm gonna show you a little bit as well there's a couple different ways we can apply damage to an actor as well so we can do it through a more specific uh, location so we can deal damage to a specific bone for example or we can deal it to a specific location on a player which can be a little bit better if we want to for example take damage in the arm and show that um, and then we're also going to have a uh, a more of like an area of uh, an area of effect damage uh just more you damage people in an area and there's two different variations of that i'll talk about those briefly as we design these quick low uh damage actor and health actor so with that let's go ahead and jump right into the video now let's go ahead and see how we can actually put this all together so to start off we're going to begin by putting together some kind of damage actor To do this, I'm simply going to go ahead and give our actor a static mesh. I'm going to disable gravity and I'm also going to set this to overlap all. This is just going to help us prevent any sort of issues later on in case for whatever reason we're not generating overlap events. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add a grab component to the static mesh as well. The grab component is of course completely optional. If you're using something like a projectile, this may not make as much sense, but this is something that I'm going to be using for this example. Next, we need some kind of way we can actually determine when we want to apply damage. In this case, I already said that we're going to be doing this whenever we overlap our damage actor to our health actor. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and jump into our static mesh. I wanna get the event on component overlap. Now, once we've determined that we've actually overlapped with some kind of actor, this is where we actually want to apply damage. To do this, go ahead and type in apply damage. And in here, you should see four different options. You should find apply damage, apply point damage, and then two options that are both different types of radial damage. Now, most of these should be pretty self-explanatory, but I'm gonna quickly run through each of these anyways. Apply damage is simply going to apply a generic damage. This is going to be useful in most cases. This can also be useful for a lot of inanimate objects that don't exactly have weak points or anything like that. If you want something that has a weak point or you want to be able to deal damage to a specific type of actor, that's where point damage can come in. 
With point damage, we can determine what point on an actor we've actually hit, whether it be based off of location, or maybe we've hit a specific bone, or something similar to that. The last two options are radial damage. This is obviously going to be useful a lot more for explosives or area of effect types of damage. This can be used in order to deal damage to actors within an area. And of course, fall off allows for us to deal lesser damage as we go further out as well. For this example, I'm simply just going to go ahead and apply a damage. I'm not going to do anything too complicated for this example. We're just going to keep it nice and simple. In the apply damage, there's really only the first four nodes that we're really going to want to focus on. The first one is damage actor. This is whatever actor we want to actually apply damage to, whatever this actor may be. In this case, we're going to get the other actor from our component overlap. The second value is, flo is a float, and this float determines how much damage we're dealing to at whatever actor we're damaging. This is also quite important for your specific setup. If you have a lot of different types of weapons that may be dealing different amounts of damage, at this point you may have an enemy or objects that have a health value ranging from 0 to 100 with different types of weapons dealing different amounts of damage. However, if you just want to deal a straight up damage or you want something a little bit more arcadey in a sense, where you just have three simple hits, then you can easily just put in one, two, or three to determine how much damage you want to do. In this case, I'm going to keep things quite simple and go for more of an arcadey approach where our actor is going to have three hit points and each time we hit, we're going to just deal one unit of damage. Now, these last three nodes honestly aren't necessary in most cases. Now, I'm only really going to focus on the first two since these are really the ones that you're probably going to end up using more than anything. Event Instigator allows for you to determine what controller actually caused the damage. This can be useful if, for example, you want to determine what AI or what enemy dealt a damage to your, your player or what enemy finally dealt that final blow. You can also use the damage causer and this will allow for you to determine what specifically caused the damage. For example, what weapon or what explosive or trap or whatever it is that actually dealt that final damage. Now that we have a way of actually applying damage, now let's go and move on to our health actor. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and head back into our content browser and of course I'm going to create a new blueprint class of type actor and I'm just going to call this health actor. First things first, we need some kind of visible mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a static mesh to this health actor. And again, I'm going to go through and make sure that we have no gravity and this is set to overlap all. So that way we have no issues whatsoever later on. Once you've done all this, we can go ahead and jump into our event graph. Again, we can go ahead and remove the begin play, the tick and the actor begin overlap if you don't want these. I'm not going to use any of these, so I'm just going to remove these just to help clean up our event graph a little bit. And then once we have that, we want to look up damage. Again here, we should have three options. We have event any damage, event point damage, and event radial damage. For this example, I'm going to be using any damage, but of course, if you want to do different effects for radial damage, or maybe you want something different for point damage, you can of course use those different events as well. With our event any damage, we first need some kind of health value. To do this, I'm going to create a float variable and I'm going to call this health. Once we've created this health float, go ahead and drop it in and we want to set this to be equal to our health value minus whatever damage we've just dealt on this damage event. And then we go and feed that back into our health in order to set this new health value. Now, before we continue any further, you also want to make sure that you actually have some sort of health value, something greater than zero, because we obviously don't want an enemy or an AI or really any actor starting off with zero health. That just doesn't really make much sense. So go and compile and save, and then you should now be able to set that float. Once we've dealt this damage, the last thing we need to do is we need to determine if this health value is less than or equal to zero. If it is, then we're going to simply destroy this actor, signifying that our actor has now died. 
And that's it. With that, we have a very, very simple way of being able to damage other actors. And this also works for enemies or other players as well, if you want to add in some other sort of damage effects. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. I also want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.